Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Udell Craven. I'm a certified ergonomic assessment specialist, and I live just outside of San Francisco in a city called San Mateo. Um, I've been doing ergonomics for the last few years. I've, I've been working in tech for about five years and kind of fell into ergonomics. And then when the pandemic started, I, I really switched gears and saw the need for, you know, people to, to have appropriate workspaces in their homes. Um, so I started my own company doing ergonomic assessments uh, with people working from home and in the office still. Um, so yeah, and I'm here today to talk about everyday ergonomics. So not just specifically at a workstation or in an office, but things that you can use throughout your life, things you do every day. You can go to the next slide, Kelvin. Um, so what is ergonomics? You, you can go to the next one too. Um, so ergonomics is really a way for us to fit a workspace or workstation to the user's needs. Um, how do we do this? We, we really use ergonomics to keep our body in natural neutral positions. So while we're working or working on hobbies or anything that we're really doing throughout the day, we, we tend to take our body outside of these natural positions and put them in these very stressful positions that strain our shoulders, our neck, our arms, our hands, like so much of our body is being stressed throughout the day. So ergonomics is a way to keep your body in a natural position while you're working or whether that's actual work or hobbies or anything in between. Um, by doing this, we're really avoiding repetitive strain injuries. I'm sure you've heard of carpal tunnel. That's the, the most common one out there. It's a musculoskeletal disorder. And it, it can be brought on by such simple things as putting pressure on your wrist repetitively. So by using ergonomics, we're avoiding things like that. So next slide. So the first thing I would say is whether you're working from home or you're just doing hobbies, or it, really anything that you're doing throughout the day that you need to, to designate a workspace for it. So if you're working from home, you know you don't have to have a whole office or an entire room dedicated to work, but you could do something like this, this photo, right? Just have a space that is your workspace. And this is gonna help you keep your focus on your work, but also at the end of the day, it's much easier to leave this work behind. So you know when I'm done at 5 p.m., I close my laptop and this, this space is my workspace. So I leave here, I leave work in this area. Next slide. So this is something we can all do together. So this is a, a very important part of ergonomics. And uh, so if we do this together now, we'll use it throughout the entire presentation. So it's called your ideal work zone. Okay, so if you stand up and if you drop your arms to your side, and you make sure that your shoulders are relaxed. That's one key thing we wanna really keep our minds on. Our shoulders are relaxed. We bend our elbows at 90 degree angle. Um, this area here is where we want to do any repetitive motions throughout the day. So whether it's typing, mousing, working on something with our hands or writing, we want to keep it in this space, right? And notice you have this 90 degree angle here, your arms are just nice right here, and then you also have this natural space between your upper arm and your torso. So if you're thinking about when you're typing, a lot of people type too far out. They no longer have this, this natural curve here, right? Uh, so we just wanna keep this in mind, this ideal work zone is here. And we wanna also notice the amount of natural space that we have between our upper arm and our torso, and also where our elbows are in relation to our body. Okay, so this is something we'll talk about throughout. Next slide. Okay, so let's talk about sitting first. Next slide. Um, so these are just basic tips for any chair. I know we're all using different types of chair and there are thousands of chairs out there that you can use that are office chairs or home chairs or anything in between, but these are just some basic tips that apply universally to chairs. So the first one I would say is to make sure that your feet are firmly on the ground. What you're really looking for is a 90 degree angle at your ankles, your knees, and your hips, which you can see in this picture here. Um, this just ensures that you have you know, proper support throughout your body. So if your feet are dangling, definitely get something to put your feet on, right? You want like a footstool, a box, a stack of books, an old stack of magazines, anything that's gonna give you stable support to put your feet on. 
The next thing you want to look for, make sure that your lower limbs are getting proper circulation. So you should have about three fingers worth of room from the back of your knees to the end of your chair. So you can see in this photo that I have just enough space between the back of my knees and the chair. Uh, this just ensures that I'm not cutting off circulation to my lower limbs. Next slide. Um, so, you know, you don't have to use an office chair. You don't have to buy an expensive chair or anything like that. You can use all kinds of chairs. Just make sure that it has proper cushioning. So I actually used this wooden chair at the beginning of the pandemic when I went to work from home. And for a couple of weeks, I didn't have a cushion. I didn't have a lumbar support. I was just on this wooden chair and I knew better, but it was like, we were only gonna be doing this for two weeks. So why invest, right? Now we're at a point where <laughs> we've been doing this for about two years. So anything that you're going to use, just make sure that you have a cushion. You can just use a pillow if you want to. Just don't sit on something really hard for long periods of time. And on the opposite side, if you're sitting on a couch or something very soft that isn't giving you proper support, make sure that you get that, make it firm. You can actually put like a piece of plywood underneath your couch cushions. Um, and this will give you extra support while still giving you the cushion of the, of the couch. Next slide. <clears throat> so lumbar support, lumbar support is very important. And in this type of chair, this wooden type of dining room chair, um, you can do multiple things to get lumbar support. You can buy lumbar support or you can make your own. So I recommend if you don't wanna buy it, I would recommend trying different sized towels, small to medium sized towels, not, not large towels, uh, but small to medium size, roll them up like a log and use something to secure it to the chair. And then find the space on the chair where it supports the natural curve of your back. So that's what you're really looking for with lumbar support. You wanna make sure that it's supporting the curve of your back while still giving the rest of your back support. So just caution and make sure the towel isn't too large. If the towel is really big, it will push you out of your chair and then you won't be getting support for the rest of your back. It causes a whole lot of other problems. So try different size towels and see what works for you. Next slide. If you want to buy lumbar support, uh, there are great options out there. There's a lot of great options. I would caution to be careful when you're buying lumbar support. Uh, so the picture with the red X on it, this is a very common type of lumbar support. And it's not that it's bad, it's that it's too large for most chairs. So if you have a chair that has a lot of space between the seat pan and the back of the chair right here, right? If you have a chair that has a lot of space there, then this lumbar support would work, but those kinds of chairs are very rare. Most chairs, like the wooden chair that I was showing earlier, um, this would push you way far forward in the chair and it causes you to not have any support at the upper back that you really need. So just be cautious, you know, there, the picture with the green check mark, this is called a backbone cushion. Um, these are great lumbar supports. I love it. I cannot recommend this one enough. It fully supports your entire back and it supports the curve of your back where you should have the lumbar support. So if you're looking for something lumbar support wise, this is a great one, or there are many other options. Just be mindful that it's not too large. Next slide. Okay, so lighting. Um, definitely work in a well-lit area. I know a lot of us tend to not think about our lighting in our home because the screen is lit up, right? So we're just thinking about that. But you can really strain your eyes if you're in a dark room looking at a bright screen. So a good rule of thumb is if you're on a Zoom call and you see yourself in the little picture in the corner and you're having a hard time seeing yourself, that means it's too dark in your room. So, you know, get a desk lamp, turn on lights, do anything that's gonna, gonna light the room more, which will help prevent eye strain, which keeps you from getting headaches. Um, but also if you're working in a really dark room, you'll find yourself, you'll, you'll find that you're wanting to lean forward, right? Uh, so we want to stay in our chair. We want to have proper back support. We don't want to be leaning forward as we're trying to work or, or watch a presentation or a movie or anything like that. So having a well-lit room definitely helps with keeping you in your chair and also preventing eye strain. Next slide. Okay, so like I was saying, you know, use lamps, uh, desk lamps, turn on the lights, do anything like that, but also be mindful 
if you do have a computer screen um, or even a laptop, don't place it directly in front of a window. So the light coming in from a window is much brighter than the light from your screen. And this causes your eyes to strain to focus on the screen rather than the light coming around it. So try not to put uh, monitors or screens of any kind directly in front of a window. If you don't have an option and you have to place the monitor in front of a window, just use blinds or curtains or anything that will help uh, mitigate the amount of light coming in. And also use desk lamps. I, I'm a big fan of desk lamps, especially now that it's getting darker earlier in the day. Uh, so desk lamps are a great option. Next slide. Are there any questions about work zone sitting or lighting? Okay. Okay. Well, we can we can keep going. Okay. So let's talk about laptops. Um, so many of us are only working on our laptop right now, and I cannot stress this enough that it is a lose lose situation in in terms of ergonomics. So. If you're only using a laptop, most of the time you are looking down when you're working or when you're just watching something. Uh, and this can really affect your upper back, your neck, your shoulders. Um, so if you're experiencing a lot of discomfort in this area of your body, ask yourself if you're looking down for prolonged amounts of time throughout the day on your laptop, right? So if you are using only a laptop, use peripheral equipment. Get a keyboard, get a mouse. Um, lift your laptop up to eye level. So just keep this in mind. If you're only working on a laptop, think about getting a keyboard and a mouse. Next slide. So if you do get a keyboard and a mouse, just raise your laptop to be at eye level. So <clears throat> you can do this many different ways. You can buy a laptop riser. You can use books that you have around your house. You could use stacks of magazines. Anything that you have in your home would be perfectly fine as long as you're getting your laptop to eye level. So when we add the keyboard and the mouse and we lift our laptop to eye level, then we're allowing ourselves to keep a straight head looking straight forward while we're working and having our keyboard and mouse at an appropriate typing level. Um, but also caution when you when you do raise your laptop like this, you don't want it too close and you don't want it too far away. So depending on if you're wearing glasses, bifocals, uh, anything like that, you need to find the sweet spot of how far away your monitor should be. So about 18 inches is good for most people, but you know, move it back and forth, see what works for you, find that sweet spot, and just make sure it's you're not looking down to work all, all day. You wanna just be head up looking forward. Next slide. Okay, so if you do get a keyboard and mouse, let's briefly talk about keyboards. I know if you go to Best Buy or Office Depot or anything like that, there are so many keyboards and almost every single one of them has a number pad, uh, the 10 keys on the side. So if you are not inputting numbers more than half of your day, don't get a keyboard with the number pad. So earlier when we talked about finding our work zone, uh, it's really important to keep your keyboard and your mouse inside of your work zone, right? So if you get the keyboard with the 10 keys, when you go to put your mouse down, it's all of a sudden pushed far out to the right. And so you can no longer keep your mouse inside of your work zone. So, you know, I, I won't say like one keyboard is better than the other. I think a general rule of thumb is if you aren't inputting numbers, don't get a keyboard with the number pad. It's just going to, to push your mouse very far away. It's going to make you reach your arm to have to use it. Um, so just be mindful of this. And for those of you who do input numbers all day and you need the 10 keypad, try using your mouse with your left hand. I know it sounds a little bit odd and it does take time to adjust to, but I've been doing it for a year or two now just to, you know, it started off kind of as a, just to see if I could do it. Um, and now I use my mouse with my left hand. I, I use a trackpad on my left hand and a, a clicking mouse on my right hand. Um, it just, it'll help keep your, your mouse and your keyboard inside of your work zone. If you need the number pad, try it with your left hand. Otherwise, skip the number pad, look for a, a better keyboard that doesn't have it. Next slide. Okay, so what about typing and mousing? Now, of everything we're gonna talk about today, this 
is the most important in terms of ergonomics. So a lot of things that ergonomics focuses on is keeping your body in a natural position, adjusting your workstation to you, right? Um, this is about interacting with your workstation in an ergonomic fashion. So I know a lot of us learned how to type and, you know, we don't have to look at the keyboard when we type. We took classes and stuff like that in school, but no one ever taught us how to actually interact with our keyboard or our mouse. So this is what I wanted to talk about. It's very important. The first thing that you really want to look at is the height of your keyboard and your mouse. So as you can see in this picture, my elbow is above my keyboard and my mouse. It's not very far above, uh, but it is above. So this allows me to have a nice straight line from my elbow down to my hand, and then my fingers are resting naturally on the keyboard. So this is something that we want to look at the height of our keyboard and our mouse. Now, if, if your keyboard and mouse are higher than your elbows, raise your seat up or, or sit on an extra cushion. Do something that's gonna give you more height than the keyboard and mouse. Um, but also caution, if you do raise your seat up really high or you sit in a cushion, on a cushion, just make sure that you use a footrest or, or something to, to firmly plant your feet on. Next slide. Uh, make sure you have your keyboard and your mouse inside of your work zone, right? So I briefly mentioned this earlier, but this is why we don't, I don't recommend um, a keyboard with the 10 keypad. It just pushes the mouse too far out. So you want it squarely inside of your work zone. Next slide. <clears throat> so this is how we properly interact with the keyboard. Now, the reason that we do this we have a bunch of nerves that run through our, our arm, up through our hand right here, right? And a lot of times we type with our wrist on the table, typing like this. So we're putting a lot of pressure on these nerves that run through our hand. This is a very common way of getting carpal tunnel. Um, it can also just cause a lot of pain and discomfort. Not, you know, doesn't even have to cause carpal tunnel. It can just be painful to your hand and your arm uh, to, to rest your wrist like that while typing. So what we're looking for is a straight line from our elbow to our hand, and then our fingers resting naturally on the keyboard. So if I were to be typing, right, I'm looking for this straight line, and then my fingers rest naturally on a keyboard, right? It's not resting on the table. So pre, I know 95% of people type wrist on the table like this. We just wanna lift our, our hand up, it's called the hover method. So our wrist isn't touching. We have this straight line and then our fingers rest naturally on the keyboard. So this is what you really wanna take away from this whole presentation. Um, especially if you've ever experienced any discomfort in your wrist or your forearm or your fingers, if you have tingling, numbness in your fingers or, or just discomfort here in your forearm, it is more than likely from putting pressure on this bundle of nerves that run through your hand up your forearm. So just keep your, your straight line here, fingers resting naturally, you're not resting your wrist. Um, also be mindful of wrist rests. So I know that a lot of us use wrist rests and they're great when they're used properly. So if you have a wrist rest, make sure you aren't resting your wrist on it while you're typing. Uh, you just want to, you know, hover over it while you type and then rest your palm on the wrist rest. So you want to avoid putting any pressure throughout the day at all on this bundle of nerves that, that runs through here. So if you're going to use a wrist rest, don't rest your wrist while you're typing, right? And then when you do use it, rest your palm on the wrist rest, not this hard part of your wrist. Okay, so rest your palm. Next slide. Um, the same exact concept goes with mousing. So, so, so many of us, when we're using a mouse, we grab the mouse, we put our wrist down, and then we move the mouse like this, right? Like this. We, we move from our wrist to use the mouse. We want to do the same thing as with typing. We want to hover, and we want to move from our elbow. So this is allowing us not putting this pressure on our, this bundle of nerves here. Um, but it's also not putting strain on our wrist. So when you plant your wrist on the table and then you do 
like this, you're putting a lot of strain on the tendons, the nerves, the muscles, all of it. So when you're using the mouse, you want to hover, you want to move from your elbow like this. Um, same with wrist rest for mice. Uh, try not to use them, but if you do, use them properly. So don't rest your wrist while you're mousing. And then when you do rest, rest your palm on the, on the wrist rest, not your wrist, okay? Next slide. Okay, so phones. <laughs> um, phones are just, they're, they're not great to hold for long periods of time. So if all of us were to pick up our phone right now, right? If you pick up your phone and you hold it as in you're going to, to open it or make a text message or something like that, how are you holding your phone? Are you using your pinky underneath your phone to steady the phone? Because this is the most common mistake that people make. Um, using your pinky to, to put all the weight of your phone on. So your pinky is also attached to this bundle of nerves here. And if you're using your pinky to steady your phone, you're putting a lot of unnecessary weight on your whole hand, but especially on these nerves here in your wrist. Um, unfortunately, there is no truly ergonomic way to hold a phone. There just isn't one way that is better than any other way. Uh, the only thing that you can really do is use equipment for your phone. So in this picture, you can see pop sockets, right? I don't know if any of you have tried a pop socket, but it really allows you to hold it in a more natural position. So when I use a pop socket on my phone, I'm no longer putting the strain on my fingers, right? I'm not, I'm not putting all this weight on this one pinky. Um, it allows me to just use it in a more natural position, but also I'm not gripping my phone. So if you aren't using anything, you're just gripping your phone and you do this for hours at a time, it puts a lot of strain on your hands. So if you use something like a pop socket or a finger strap, it allows you to hold your phone without putting all the strain on your hand. You're not gripping it, you're not putting all the weight. Um, so just be very mindful of how you hold your phone. Uh, next slide. Um, definitely be mindful of tech snacks. So this is something that is now becoming more popular to, that people realize is happening because we've been using phones for years now. Um, but tech, tech snack is really just looking down for hours at a time, causing a lot of discomfort here in your neck and your upper back. So like I said, there, there is no ergonomic way to hold a phone. So really the answer to this is to switch it up. Hold it with one hand, uh, if, especially if you're using something like a pop socket, right? Hold it with one hand, hold it with two hands, put it on a tabletop, put it up somewhere, right? Um, just don't stay in one static position for long periods of time. So as you're using your phone, switch hands, hold it together, put it down, do everything you can to just keep it moving. Because the longer that you hold it in one static position, the more pressure and strain that you're putting on a certain group of muscles or tendons or nerves in your hand, right? So you wanna avoid that. Like I said, unfortunately, there is no one specific way to ergonomic way to hold a phone, but switch it up, try products, be mindful of tech snack. Instead of looking down for hours at a time, hold it up for a little while. Um, unfortunately, holding it, holding it up at your face, puts a lot of strain on your shoulders and your neck. So. You just have to go between the two, find equipment that you can use that helps. Next slide. Um, and stretches. So switch it up, try different ways, but also do stretches. You can do very simple things. You don't even have to stand up from your chair, right? You just wanna do simple things like chin tucks or shoulder lifts. So a chin tuck is if you put your fingers here and you just push your chin back for three seconds at a time, right? And then you put back three seconds again. So chin tucks really help with the muscles in your neck. And if you're looking down for long periods of time and you're experiencing this discomfort here in your neck, things like this can really help. Um, also shoulder lifts, right? You just lift your shoulders for three seconds and then back down and then three seconds again. So it's really important to do stretches, but it's also very important to do, take breaks. Um, so switch it up take breaks, do anything you can to break that static position, because that's really what we're trying to avoid here is sitting in this one static position for hours on end. Next slide. 
Okay, any questions about what we just talked about, laptops, typing and mousing for phones? No? Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so ergonomic products. Um, there are lots of ergonomic products out there, uh, like lots and lots, and a lot of them aren't even listed as ergonomic products. So I was talking about pop sockets, right? I searched their website, every inch of their website, and nowhere in there do they ever really talk about their product being ergonomic or helping, you know, humans interact with their phone in a better way. So there are lots of products that aren't listed as ergonomic, but actually are really good for ergonomics. So you have pop sockets, finger straps, anything that helps you hold a phone without gripping or putting all that weight on your pinky. Uh, you have phone stands, tablet stands. Next slide. You have, uh, so these are really good. This is called a, a gooseneck tablet holder or a gooseneck phone holder. I really like these. I uh, have one at my desk. It really just, it allows you to put your phone here without having to hold it. So earlier when I was saying, you know, text neck is looking down, so look up, right? You put a lot of strain on your shoulders and your neck when you're holding in this position. But if you can put your phone here on a, on a adjustable arm like this, then, you know, you do have to still tap like this, but it's not the same as putting all this weight and pressure on your hand. Uh, so think about things like this. These are all very affordable items. They are not expensive. I think the most expensive one's like $20. Um, so it's definitely something that I would recommend for anyone to use, especially if you're using a tablet or an iPad or something like that to watch movies or events like this, presentations. You know, you can put your tablet here at eye level so you aren't looking down and then you don't even have to hold it or, or really interact much if you're just watching something. So I, I would highly recommend looking at some of these products. And I actually have a list of products that I pulled together uh, that I'll give to Kelsey and she'll make available to you all. Next, next slide. Okay, so just some general best practices. These are things that I tell everyone when I'm doing ergonomic evaluations for anybody. So the first thing is keyboard shortcuts. I don't know how many you all are familiar with, but there are some very simple ones that really cut down on the amount of time that you go between your keyboard and your mouse. So things like copy, paste, uh, print, undo is a really good one. Um, and then alt tab, I know alt tab isn't on here, but if you have windows open or different tabs open and you click alt and you tap tab, it will bring up all of your open windows. And then you can keep tapping tab and it will take you to the window that you want. So this, uh, this really cuts down on you having to go to your mouse, find the window you want, click on it. So if you just do alt and tab, it'll take you to the different windows you have open. I can't recommend that one enough because it just keeps you on your keyboard, right? And you're doing less clicks with your finger. So any type of mouse that you're using, doing these clicks is, you know, it's, it's, strain, it's stressful to your hand. Um, so cutting down on the amount of clicks that you do and the amount of time that you're mousing, especially if your mouse is outside of your work zone, uh, try keyboard shortcuts. You can also just Google keyboard shortcuts and you'll find so many of them. There, there are way more than this, but this is a good, just basic, uh, basic guide of keyboard shortcuts. Next slide. Okay, so I cannot recommend making time for breaks enough. Every 30 minutes, you should at least stand up. I, you don't have to leave your desk, but move out of your chair, right? Break the static position. So this is something I know I've talked about a few times already, but keeping your body in one static position for long periods of time is just, it's very stressful to your body, um, you know, especially sitting down. So a lot of people will get a standing desk because they think that's ergonomic, right? And it is but it's also about uh, sitting and standing. It's not just standing, it's not just sitting. You want to mix it up throughout the day. So whatever you're doing, just move around, just stand up, move around, get some water, go outside for a walk, find the cat like I did here. Um, <laughs> it's just very important to move your body. You wanna break the static position. Next slide. Um, also do stretches throughout the day. 
I would say at minimum every two hours, do some of these stretches. You know, you can just stand up at your desk and do these stretches, but it's very important to just listen to your body, break that static position, do some stretches, very simple stretches, nothing, you know, crazy. Um, and I can also provide this sheet to Kelsey and she can disperse it. Next slide. Okay, so this is a, a very traditional ergonomic practice. It's called the 20-20-20 rule. Um, so while we're sitting here focusing on our screen for hours at a time, it is very, it causes a lot of eye fatigue. So what we wanna to do to mitigate the eye fatigue, find an object that is at least 20 feet away and focus on that object for 20 seconds and do that every 20 minutes. So it's 20 minutes, 20 feet away for 20 seconds. So, and it's not just looking at nothing for 20 seconds, right? You wanna find an object and you wanna look at it. You wanna focus on that object for at least 20 seconds. Uh, this is a really good way to prevent eye fatigue, which the more your eyes get fatigued, the more you're likely to get a headache. So if you experience a lot of headaches throughout the day from just being on your computer for long periods of time, this is something you really wanna try and do every 20 minutes. Find something 20 feet away and focus on it for 20 seconds. Next slide. And that's it. So this is just um, you know, a very rough introduction to ergonomics, but it's also everyday ergonomics. So it isn't just for being at your workstation. You know, all of these practices can be used throughout whatever you're doing throughout the day.